okay so today we'll be discussing vasopressors and anotropes and this is one of the most requested topic on the channel and i tell you there are many many good lectures available on the youtube or internet and there are many text available for this many online articles available for this topic you can refer them but as we do on our channel we try to compile the data from all those uh, literature available and we try to uh, simplify it in a manner so that even if you are a doctor or a nurse or paramedic who is joining on the first day in intensive care unit or emergency department or even if you are working continuously in the intensive care you will find something new and something interesting regarding this topic so what i have done this i have read this topic in detail though we are practicing a lot and i have note, noted down all the points in the uh, my notebook and i have some literature available with me also so that we cover almost all the factors or points related to this topic so i'm sure at the end of this topic uh, is this session you will be comfortable with these vasopressors anotropes and also you will find the approach so that even if a new vasopressor anotropes comes in you will be very comfortable to use it and apply in your clinical scenario so let's start so vasopressors and anotropes so whenever we say about vasopressor anotropes we immediately these four five things come into our mind noradrenaline adrenaline dopamine dobutamine vasopressin these are the commonest one and we'll see some more now one thing to ask for why we require vasopressors and anotropes basically they are required to treat the shock what do you mean by shock so if from the baseline if your systolic blood pressure is fallen more than 30 mm hg for example if you know that the patient's blood pressure constantly remains at 140 systolic blood pressure or 150 systolic blood pressure even if if you know then more than 30 drop in that is considered as something called shock or if your mean arterial pressure is less than 60 mm hg then we require the use of these vasopressors and anotropes to maintain the blood pressure of the patient so basically both these drugs vasopressor anotropes are required to maintain the blood pressure specifically mean arterial pressure because it's the perfusion pressure of the patient so as we have discussed as we have seen we are continuously using two terminologies vasopressors and anotropes some people use anotropes uh, simply for all the adrenaline or adrenaline vasopressin which they are using some use vasopressors so let's see what is actually vasopressors and anotropes so to understand so this is your sorry this is your heart and from heart the blood is pumped to the all the blood vessel and these blood vessels take the blood to your different organs brain liver kidneys and other organs so that's the one so anything anything which increases your heart rate and contractility so heart rate and contractility so anotrope means any agent or anything which is increasing the contractile power means it is increasing the contractility heart heart chronotropy means heart rate but anotrope means contractility of the heart so anything which is increasing uh, the contractility of the heart is known as chronotropic and vasopressor means suppose we have a low blood pressure so we squeeze the blood vessels so any agent we squeeze the blood vessel uh, uh, blood vessel to bring the blood pressure up is called vasopressors so understand so any any agent which is increasing the contractility of the heart is called anotrope and any blood any agent which is compressing this is the lumen of the blood vessel which is compressing the blood vessel it is making them narrow so that the blood squeezes out and the bp pushes up we call it vasopressors also just to uh, make it complete any agent which is dilating the blood vessels they are called vasodilators so because we are discussing how to manage shock how to increase the blood uh, pressure so we will not discuss vasodilators today's topic is regarding vasopressors and anotropes so we understood that any agent which will act, act on the heart and will increase the contractility of the heart will be called as anotrope chronotropy means increase in the heart rate they have mixed effect vasopressors mean they are acting on the blood vessel making the lumen narrow of the blood vessel squeezing the blood vessels and then increasing the blood pressure so what are the receptors so once we have understood that uh, these are the two agents so what on what receptors they act so basically we have 
अल्फा वन रिसेप्टर्स बीटा वन रिसेप्टर्स बीटा टू रिसेप्टर्स डोपामिन रिसेप्टर्स वेसोप्रेसिन वन वी वन रिसेप्टर्स एनजियोटेंसिन टू रिसेप्टर्स एंड इनडायरेक्ट रिसेप्टर्स फॉस्फोडाइस्ट्रेस थ्री रिसेप्टर्स सो द कॉमनेस्ट वन विच विल बी यूज अल्फा वन बीटा वन बीटा टू and then dopamine or vasopressin receptors are also in use so alpha 1 receptors are present in the blood vessels so i am skipping all those receptors which are not helpful in discussion means if you find the literature there will be number of receptors and then you need to remember these and these and then in the end it is written that clinical significance is not known so we are not discussing that we are discussing only those are necessary for our clinical practice so alpha 1 receptors where they are present alpha 1 receptors are present in the blood vessels so whenever alpha 1 receptors are stimulated they cause squeezing of the blood vessels so there is the blood vessels get contracted and your blood pressure uh, bring, uh, brings up beta 1 receptors are present in the heart so whenever beta 1 receptors are uh, uh, stimulated there is increase in the contractility as well as increase in the heart rate to which extent it depends upon agent to agent so beta 1 receptor increases the heart rate increasing the contractility of the heart alpha 1 receptor is present in the blood vessel this squeezes the blood vessels and the one which is more important one more important is beta 2 beta 2 receptors are also present in the blood vessels but they make the blood vessel dilate so stimulation of the beta 2 receptors will make the blood vessel dilate and there will be fall in blood pressure so understood alpha 1 receptors are present in the blood vessels which make the blood vessel contract beta 1 receptors are present in the heart which may increases the heart rate and contractility beta 2 receptors are present in the blood vessel which make the blood vessel dilate dopamine receptors are present many places mainly four cornea cerebral renal and mesenteric so one different different dose they affect different vasopressin receptors are present and they are vasoconstrictors so they constricts other agents are angiotensin 2 receptor stimulation of that increases the the blood pressure through angiotensin axis uh, uh, renal axis and phosphodiesterase uh, is phosphodiesterase 3 receptors so they increases the cyclic gmp and then why are they there they make the um, uh, they increases the contractility of the heart and uh, blood vessels so uh, they increases the contractility of the blood vessels so we will be discussing majority about alpha 1 beta 1 beta 2 receptors and dopamine receptor so we have discussed the receptors now we have understood that vasopressors and anotropes are used for treatment of shock so you need to uh, whenever you, you need to apply or whenever you need to use any of these agents whether adrenaline or adrenaline or anything first you need to understand that what is what are the types of shock so types of shocks are hypovolemic shock hypovolemic shock means there is a loss of blood volume in the uh, body means the per se the uh, blood uh, there is no means loss like you have trauma or you have upper gi bleed or you have anything ruptured in the abdomen ruptured aneurysms or if you call a non hemorrhagic bleed then you get a excessive uh, diuresis or diarrhea or third spacing log where there is lot of edema in the body but the intravascular compartment is depleted so hypovolemic shock what is important is if the patient is hypovolemic shock your vasopressors anotropes are not required you need to supplement fluid blood products uh, colloids albumin like that then when there is a blood is filled means you have filled the blood um, adequate volume is present in the uh, 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 body then second is the our is cardiogenic shock cardiogenic shock means the heart is not able to pump the blood forward so it is usually seen in your mi myocardial infarction or congestive heart failure or you have uh, myocarditis you have tachyarrhythmias bradyarrhythmias like that where you can have valvular insufficiencies like mitral stenosis or mitral regurgitation aortic regurgitation like that so if it is a cardiogenic shock you need to supplement an agent which increase the chrono uh, inotropic effect uh, of the heart or chronotropic effect the heart so here what is required is inotrope or uh, inotrope is more required in cardiogenic shock 
then you have obstructive shock obstructive shock means means the blood is filled in the or the volume is good in the body heart is pumping good but the heart is not able to um, push the blood forward even though it's functioning normally so commonest one is your two main common pulmonary embolism and you have cardiac tamponade these are two which you need to uh, uh, remember uh, uh, commonest one in a, if there is a tamponade means there is a pericardial tamponade or cardiac tamponade or pulmonary embolism tension pneumothorax can also be a part of obstructive shock because the, it is not allowing the uh, blood to get uh, in the forward direction so in obstructive shock though you can uh, use the agents but to relieve the obstruction is one of the most important thing then you have distributive shock means adequate volume is there heart is pumping good there is no obstruction blood is flowing into the blood vessels but what is happening the blood uh, blood vessels are dilated so there is a loss of uh, tone of the vessel wall and the blood ves uh, and the blood pressure is falling so the tone of blood vessels is <coughs> not there then you will call it as a distributive shock what are the commonest one your septic shock is one of the most commonest reason then your anaphylactic shock is one of the commonus region you have certain toxins which can vesicular vasodilatation spinal shock means neurogenic after spinal cord trauma then also you can have burns also present with the vasodilatory stage so what i'm trying to say is whenever you encounter a patient of shock where the blood pressure is low first you try to find out where my patient is fitting in four type these type of shock it may be happen that patient may be hypovolemia having an mi it may happen that patient is in cardiogenic shock may have sepsis like that so it can be combination but once you understand the type of shock <laughs> then you will be able to apply the vasopressor inotropes in a better way i'll take a time and explain it in a much in a little bit in detail so let's see this mean arterial pressure means your blood pressure is dependent upon your cardiac output and stroke uh, systemic vascular resistance systemic vascular resistance means your tone of the blood vessels how much they are constricted so we can also say this this is a afterload so if the systemic vascular resistance is low like in sepsis let me focus it so if it is low like sepsis anaphylaxis uh, drug induced or neurogenic blood vessels uh, sorry neurogenic uh, then the, uh, the uh, there is a decrease in the afterload and you require a vasopressor at this stage you need the blood vessels to get constricted so uh, that is more required then uh, if afterload is okay then mean arterial pressure is depend upon the cardiac output cardiac output depends upon stroke volume and heart rate so if the heart rate is a problem where will be heart rate is a problem degenerative disease like that uh, myocardial ischemia drug induced degenerative heart disease then you need a chronotop here you need to increase the things to need increase your heart rate is atropin so they they are have very specific indications so we'll not be discussing but you need to see if, if symptomatic bradycardia is there you need to use atropin sort of agents to increase the heart rate now again cardiac output also depends on stroke volume to so stroke volume depends upon preload and contractility so anything in which the contractility of the heart is um, lost like myocardial ischemia severe sepsis secondary to my and myocarditis then you need inotrope here adrenaline dobutamine or combination of something like that and if it is a preload loss then obviously a hemorrhage gi loss or polyuria then you need require the volume replacement so understood this is how you get an idea of which agent to use one so mean arterial pressure is dependent on preload heart contractility heart rate and uh, afterload so if the preload is low it means hypovolemic shock you need to supplement volume if the heart is contracting uh, contractility is failing like in cardiogenic shock you need to increase the heart rate contractility by anotrope if it is secondary to heart rate failure then you need to use a chronotrope which is atropine and if it is a because of the vasodilatation then you need to use vasopressors so this way we need to use the agents so i i hope this shock part is clear so always try to find out which type of shock your patient is having now 
let's see the common agents these are uh, tables i have taken from up to date these are very good ones anyone can refer so let's see the commonest agents we have five major common uh, agents one is your noradrenaline second is adrenaline then dopamine dobutamine and vasopressin these are the five important ones and then we'll discuss a little bit about the other ones also so here we have the agent and they have alpha 1 activity beta 1 activity beta 2 and dopamine energy activity dopamine energy activity is only for dopamine or dobutamine you need to remember for that only for dopamine so let's see first is our noradrenaline so okay just a second so here is our noradrenaline so noradrenaline has good alpha 1 activity alpha 1 activity means it will cause blood vessels to contract also it has called beta 1 activity which is lesser than your uh, alpha 1 so it in it increases the contraction of the heart also and there is no beta 2 so what happens because the when uh, an noradrenaline causes peripheral vas uh, vascular constriction it, inc it increases the systemic vascular resistance of the patient because of that and uh, uh, also uh, because of uh, that very good amount of uh, peripheral vasoconstriction there is a and the blood pressure rises and a, there is a reflex bradycardia and this reflex bradycardia is compensated by the beta 1 effect of this uh, uh, agent so net result is cardiac output may not be increased but systemic vascular resistance is increased and there is increased the blood pressure so non adrenaline has good alpha 1 activity beta 1 activities are there but because of the reflex increase the blood pressure there is a bradycardia so beta 1 effect gets um, cut off so what you remain is a uh, cardiac output remains low or slightly increase but major effect is systemic vascular resistance so it is very good in distributive shock like anaphylaxis also is there adrenaline also used but uh, septic shock is there in this it is an agent of choice in septic shock so that's why it is very very helpful then we have epinephrine epinephrine has all sorts of effect except for dopamine it is a good good alpha 1 activity so epinephrine it has got uh, good alpha 1 good beta 1 good beta 2 activity so it increases the heart rate or uh, uh, heart uh, cardiac output also and systemic vascular resistance is dependent on the dose if you use in the low dose this alpha activity is a little lesser the beta 1 activity predominates so cardiac output increases but if if it is given in the high doses then alpha 1 activity also predominates and in higher doses systemic vascular resistance increases and it causes blood pressure so as you go higher in the doses the chances of arrhythmia also increases then we have dobutamine dobutamine is a good inotrope it is you plus it is a vasodilator so it has good uh, beta 1 activity so it will increase the heart contractility but at the same time it has got beta 2 activity but so that it will act on the blood vessels and it will dilate the blood vessels so what will happen though the heart rate will uh, heart contractility will increase blood blood vessels will get dilated so the patient may have a fall in the blood pressure so at times though it increases the cardiac output but systemic vascular resistance can fall so at times along with dobutamine you need to take adrenaline or noradrenaline to counter the systemic vascular resistance that's why in cardiogenic shock if it is a warm shock means uh, blood pressure is maintained but the heart is failing then dobutamine has a role but if you are using dobutamine a patient is already in shock then you need to support of adrenaline or noradrenaline with it to take care of the systemic vascular resistance isoproteinol is not used frequently it is usually used when a norepinephrine is contraindicated which is rarely a case it has got beta 1 beta 2 activity so more or less effect, effect as uh, effect as isoproteinol and like that but it is not very much use dopamine so dopamine you need to understand the effect of dopamine is dose dependent low dose standard dose and uh, high doses remember in low doses it is said that it causes renal vasodilatation and increases the perfusion and the renal dose that's why it increases the urine output of the patient so but 
no studies have proven that and nowadays it is not recommended to use the renal dose still some people use it and which have old school of thought at times they feel that it works so it is not used for uh, inotropic effect in this dose it is used for the renal doses in higher doses it just acts like your noradrenaline but it is less potent so if you increase the dose very high of dopamine then it increases uh, it acts like noradrenaline and but the effect is a little less so increases the systemic vascular resistance now the in the standard dose in the standard dose it acts as a inotrope so it has good good beta 1 activity less alpha 1 activity so it increases the cardiac output also and a little increase in systemic vascular resistance so if a patient is in the cardiogenic shock with fall in blood pressure dopamine has got a role but because of the arrhythmias the potential of the arrhythmia a, it is used with caution so understood norepinephrine norepinephrine epinephrine dopamine dobutamine we have few more uh, also ephedrine ephedrine is simply like your uh, epinephrine but less potent it is usually used in post spinal uh, shock after spine surgery you just push this if it is a post spinal hypotension you just give a ephedrine and the blood pressure brings up so it has got all the effect of the uh, epinephrine but to a uh, less potent but it doesn't cause the, that sort of arrhythmias so that's why ephedrine vasopressin vasopressin acts on the v1 receptor and it is a potent vasoconstrictor very very strong vasoconstrictor therefore it is a chances of mesenteric ischemia splanchnic ischemia uh, uh, peripheral limb ischemia are very high so it is not used as a first line agent newer ones angiotensin 2 receptor and agonist are there which act on the angiotensin 2 receptors and increase the blood pressures the one or i think one agent is approved but not i think in india even in very very few countries mildrinone is an indirect we have discussed it is a phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitor what happens because of this inhibition the cyclic gmp increases in the because of action on the cyclic gmp and the intracellular calcium increases and it causes the blood vessels to contract so it's a, a, it is um, having an indirect effect not acting on these receptors so it is used in congestion when other of other vasopressors are or anotropes are not working as an adjuvant to them like that so these are the commonest one and this is the basic uh, physiology of that don't get uh, uh, confused or um, what say uh, even if you are not getting all this or remember able to remember we'll cover uh, more in the in, uh, few other slides and you will have a good grasp of that so these again one table which is a very very good table and i have just mentioned for you all so that we can see which agent is used where what are, uh, what is the agent recommended agent uh, where to use which agent so noradrenaline we have seen that it is a, it is a good uh, agent which increase the peripheral vascular resistance increase the systemic vascular resistance so is it these are the doses range we will discuss the doses but this is a good table to reference no need to buy hard just have it pasted on your icu and once you uh, start making infusions of this noradrenaline adrenaline you will get by heart all, all these doses so these are the initial dose maintenance dose and refractory dose so in initial dose is little high maintenance dose is a little less and range of maximum dose uh, are too much high one very very important point to remember is as far as the literature is there practically there is no maximum role of these agents it depends upon where you till at what stage you want to chase so there is no conclusive study where we will show that this is the maximum amount of dose which can be given it depends on the clinical status of the patient till where we want to chase and where the effect is coming or not coming so this is simply a topic of another lecture uh, I recently come across one good uh, video on this, but uh, there is no conclusive maximum dose for any of these agents. So, noradrenaline, where it's used, by default, it is the vasopressor choice in septic shock, 
Hypovolemic shock means if the patient is hypovolemic, you need to supplement fluids and once the BP is not picking, then you can take noradrenaline. And in cardiogenic shock also, nowadays some studies have come that instead of dobutamine or dopamine, in cardiogenic shock with sepsis, this noradrenaline is the initial agent of choice. So it is wide range, wide range utilized. We'll see the dilution in the later slides. Adrenaline. In septic guidelines, it is used in the cardiogenic uh, shock with sepsis. So, it is used in anaphylactic shock, choice of agent in anaphylactic shock. It is <coughs> the second line or third line agent in septic shock. If your blood pressure is not picking up with noradrenaline, then the, if you want to add a second line agent, either you can go with vasopressin or either you can increase the, add the noradrenaline. So, it causes arrhythmias, obviously, and inotropic effect, not much recommended. It has got inotropic effect, but in higher doses, mostly its uh, vasopressor effect is elevated. So, adrenaline in cardiogenic shock, second line agent, along with noradrenaline in septic shock, in anaphylactic shock, it is the recommended. Phenylephrine, we don't use. Pure adrenaline vasoconstrictor, not use, we don't use much. Actually, what what is the problem with phenylephrine is uh, phenylephrine. Earlier, what we need to do is we want to take a syringe and then we take one ml of it, push it in 100 ml, then we take one ml, then we again push uh, 100 ml, and then we take 10 ml, and then because it's very very potent. Nowadays, just uh, recently, one of my friend, doctor, uh, came across that two three months there is a inject uh, pre filled syringes of phenylephrine has come, which is a good vasopressor. Uh, it is in a very small strength, and you just give a push, and the BP comes up in during intubation or rapid sequence intubations. So uh, maybe we will use that, but. Epinephrine is used very frequently, norepinephrine is used, phenylephrine is not much. Dopamine, technically not used much in the standard dosage, but still in cardiogenic shock with low blood pressure, you can use this. So, an alternative, alternative to norepinephrine septic shock in selected patient, very, very selective, not recommended technically, dobutamine use. It has got a lot of side effect, tachyarrhythmias and arrhythmias. So, dopamine causes lots of arrhythmia, that's the problem. In low doses, they may be have a renal protective effect, <coughs> but it is not recommended. So, till now, norepinephrine, norepinephrine, noradrenaline and adrenaline are the commonest one. Phenylephrine, we don't use much, but it is a good vasopressor. Dopamine standard doses have an inotropic effect uh, for that. Dobutamine. Dobutamine is used in cardiogenic shock with low output and maintain blood pressure. Don't forget this. This is very, very important. Sorry. So, maintain blood pressure. Dobutamine should be used in patients who have cardiogenic shock, failing card with maintained blood pressure. If there is, because it's a vasodilator effect, the blood vessels will dilate. So, it will increase the cardiac output, but blood vessel will dilate and BP will fall. So, if you want to use dobutamine, Use noradrenaline or adrenaline as an agent which increase the blood pressure of the patient. So, dobutamine in cardiogenic shock. In septic shock also in patient who have a cardiac failure, then also do dobutamine can be used. <laughs> so, like this, uh, add an add-on to norepinephrine for cardiogenic, cardiac output augmentation in septic shock with myocardial dysfunction. So, low LV patient, cardiac patient with septis, you can use it along with noradrenaline. Vasopressin, nowadays it is used in addition to norepinephrine in septic shock. If the norepinephrine is failing in septic shock, we can use uh, vasopressin. <coughs> and it's a very potent uh, vasoconstrictor. In brain dead patients for organ maintenance also, vasopressin is now considered the one of the first line agent. Milrinol is an indirect inhibitor. It is used for very short term in uh, cardiac cardiogenic shock refractory to other doses so these are the agents now we'll see how to make it these five agents how to make it so how to make infusions so noradrenaline it comes in a 2 ml y uh, 2 ml ampule it contains 2 mg so 
what is the recommendation so i am collected the commonest recommendation which is available on the books and in the up to date and also on the text so the doses are very uh, much vary from country to country in hospital to hospital watch range of <coughs> drugs which range of um, uh, which range doses are used for these agents but i have used the commonest range so you need to know how how much strength comes in these ampules and how to make the infusion so it comes in 2 ml ampule which contains 2 mg so the dose which is required is 1 to 15 microgram per minute so uh, multiply by 60 so we'll get uh, 60 to 900 microgram per hour you need to give so you take a uh, 50 cc syringe add 2 ml uh, 2 ml to it and so the how how much it will con, uh, come 2 mg 2 ml means 2 mg 2 mg means 2000 microgram so 2000 microgram in 50 ml so divide by this so it will come to 40 microgram per ml so how much we need to give 60 is to 900 so 60 divided by 40 is the lowest 1.5 ml per hour then 900 divided by 40 so will 22 to 22 so 1.5 ml per hour to 22.5 ml per hour is the range of norelline again we don't know the what is the maximum dose it depends upon your hospital policy but you should know one more thing is this is the standard uh, formulation then double strain quarter strain and octa strain also is made means 2 mg means one ampule then two ampules means uh, double st- uh, strength octa uh, uh, means four ampules and then 16 ampules like that uh, is also made in certain hospital so uh, in your hospital it can be single strength it can be double strain it can be octa strain it can be um, um, 16 up to 16 they have used so in our hospital single or double strength is used also make sure you make all the infusions in d5 because whatever data is available there is no neck to neck trial but they say as old school of thought the it is said that in dextrose they are considered to be more effective though in ns also it is there made and it works but in d5 solutions they are considered to be more effective even in even in diabetics the amount is very less the infusion is very less and even if the patient is on very high vasopressors and um, they may are at risk of hypoglycemia so dextrose will also can help so that's the thing so this is how you made add one ampule to 50 cc syringe so per ml will contains 2000 microgram per ml you will get 40 microgram and then this is the range 1.5 ml per hour to 22 point you see that it is the dose which i mentioned here is not kg per minute means there is kg one per minute is also doses written in the literature but the it is used for dopamine but for noradrenaline usually it is independent of the weight and the dose is 1 to 15 microgram per minute now <coughs> adrenaline sorry this is the so adrenaline comes as a 1 ml ampule and it contains also only 1 mg the dose is again 1 to 5 uh, 15 microgram per minute same do- range so just double 3 ml per hour so 1 ampule 50 cc contain you made in 50 cc syringe 100 microgram so 1 ml contains 20 microgram so uh, we should we need to give 60 to 900 so 60 divided by 20 3 ml 900 divided by 20 to 40 so you see up 3 ml to 40 ml per hour is the range which is given in the literature we hardly go about 30 so but it depends upon institution to institution so 3 ml to 45 ml per hour you can give so this is how you make the infusions then dopamine dopamine is as you see is dose dependent so we have uh, low dose which is called renal dose standard dose which is anotropic dose in which the contractility of the heart is increased and high dose means it then it, it is as good as noradrenaline but it is less potent than noradrenaline so it comes as a 5 ml ampule which which contains 200 mg means 40 mg in 1 ml in 5 ml 200 mg so you mix 200 mg into 50 cc so per ml it will contain 4 mg per ml 
Now the standard range, dose range is means the standard one is which in which it is an inotrope acting on the heart, increasing the contactility. It is three uh, to ten microgram per kg per minute. So if we take a seventy kg person for seventy kg to multiply by seventy, uh, so two hundred to seven hundred microgram per minute. Multiply by sixty so that we give, get in the hour per hour dose. It will be. 12.6 mg to 42 mg per hour so in our 1 ml it will 4 mg so 12.6 divided by 4 equal to 3.5 ml per hour to 42 divided by 4 this 10.5 ml so now it is important that approximately if you are using dopamine for the inotropic effect use it in the range of 3 to 10 ml per hour If you are going beyond 10 ml per hour, then you are not using it as an inotrope. Uh, you are acting as a vasopressor. It will have an effect of uh, like noradrenaline, but less potent. And if it using uh, giving the dose less than 3 ml per hour, then it is acting in the renal dose. Some cardiologists or some people still use it. To them, it works. Uh, you can't challenge that, but literature doesn't support. So the point is, if you are adding dopamine to your vasopressors or inotropes infusion list, if you are giving for inotropic effect, use it in the range of 3 to 10 ml per hour. I have seen many many institutions. They increase the dopamine dose to 10, uh, 15 ml, 20 ml per hour, and they feel that it will increase the heart rate. No, uh, contrary to no, at that dose, its inotropic effect. Goes down and the vasopressor effect goes up. So don't increase the increase the infusion beyond 10 ml per hour if you are using this strength of solution. So for inotropic effect, very very important. Use dopamine in the range of 3 ml to 10 ml per hour. So that's how. Then you are dobutamine, which has got a uh, which is used in cardiogenic shock uh, with maintained blood pressure. It comes as a vial. And per vial contains 250 mg. So if you mix 250 mg into 50 cc, per ml will contain 5 mg. Uh, 5 mg. So usual dose is 2.5 to 20 microgram per kg per minute. So for 70 kg, this will be the range. Multiply by 60, you will get the range in per hour microgram per hour in mg 10.5 to 85 microgram per hour. So 10.5 divided by 5 ml is equal to 2. 84 divided by 5 equal to 16. So dobutamine can be range is 2 to 17 ml per hour is the range in which dobutamine can be used and it will have a good inotropic effect, but as well as it is a vasodilator, so it will can cause the blood pressure to fall. So to counter that, you can take adrenaline or noradrenaline. <coughs> Vasopressin, simple, very simple. This comes as a 1 ml uh, ampule. It contains 20 units. The range is 0.01 to 0.04. So per minute, so per hour, it will be 0.6 to 2.4. Remember, it is made in 20 cc syringe. Vasopressin we don't use in 50 cc syringe. In 20 cc syringe, so per one unit equal to one ml. Your one ml equal to one unit. So if you want to give this range to so 0.6 to 2.5 ml per hour, and it is not titrated, standard. Either it is going on. 0.6 ml per hour, 1.2 ml per hour, 1.8 ml per hour, or 2.4 ml per hour. We don't titrate, and titration is also not recommended. And it is a very good ves potent vasoconstrictor, used as a second line agent in your uh, septic shock in brain dead patients like that. And, and it makes the other vasopressors or inotropes also work because of its calcium sensitizing effect. Something like that also. That effect is also. So don't taper off. And it is potent vasoconstrictor. So it can happen that it can develop limb ischemia, splanking ischemia like that. But it's a good temporary uh, uh, vaso potent vasopressors, which increases the overall effect of other vasopressors. So it is simple. It's it is used in 20 cc. Earlier we were using 50 cc syringe, but it is used in 20 cc, and the dose is 0.6 to 2.5 ml per hour. So use it like 0.6 ml per hour, 1.2 ml per hour, 1.8 ml per hour, and 2.4 ml. So these were the five uh, like things. So now we'll see this table, which is a very good table. Which agent to use? So cause of hypotension, pulmonary uh, capillary vase pressure means. Your left heart status. If it is pulmonary capillary vase pressure is high, that means the uh, heart is failing. 
कार्डिक आउटपुट एंड सिस्टमिक वेस्कुलर रेजिस्टेंस मीन्स वेस्टोडाइटिस सो if we know cause of hypertension we don't know we don't know anything we don't know the cardiac output and we don't know sixth just start with norepinephrine no dopamine no dopamine dopamine can cause ves- very much vasoarrhythmia so just use this um, noradrenaline so if you don't know anything the type of shock the first agent you can use is norepinephrine norepinephrine even in cardiac genic shock also if in sepsis it is recommended that norepinephrine has a better Uh, uh, effect hypovolemia hypovolemia means that the heart is failing cardiac output is low systemic vascular resistance uh, increase hypovolemia there is peripheral vasoconstriction you don't need to give vasopressors or inotropes just simply supplement the fluids fluids is required so in hypovolemic shock fluids should be given now we have two things one is your acute decompensated heart failure mi like stage where cardiac output is low peripheral vaso uh, vaso constriction uh, systemic peripheral in cardiogenic shock you will use dobutamine or dopamine dopamine if the peripheral vascular resistance is low bp is low dobutamine if the bp is maintained one thing to be understand that in sepsis with cardiogenic shock noradrenaline with dopamine is recommended and or adrenaline with dopamine is recommended so if in sepsis with cardiogenic shock use dobutamine along with noradrenaline or adrenaline in 2021 guidelines they have recommended dobutamine plus adrenaline to be used in cardiogenic shock with sepsis in pure cardiogenic shock again norepinephrine can be used dobutamine again can be used if the blood pressure is maintained if not then bp is not maintained to increase the heart uh, contractility use dobutamine then add adrenaline you can also use dopamine plus adrenaline sepsis no doubt nor adrenaline anaphylaxis adrenaline no doubt about it anesthesia used hypotension i have told you ephedrine is the drug which we use phenylephrine also can be used now pfil syringes has come so those can also be used so this is the table very very good table you can go through this later on this um, uh, uh, video uh, stop it now this i found somewhere on the net and i had tried to uh, reconstruct it just a rough sketch it's not uh, but you wa- just want to show a rough sketch regarding how this is on this axis anatropy is increased means we are going through more contractile heart rate contract contractility in heart rate this here it is vasoconstriction here it is vasodilatation so you see vasopressin is and phenylephrine are good potent vasoconstrictor so they will cause vasoconstriction they don't have this inotropic effect so if you want to increase the systemic vascular resistance or uh, like this only want to increase the peripheral vasoconstriction or systemic vascular resistance then phenylephrine or vasopressin can be used if you noradrenaline noradrenaline has a good vasoconstriction but a little uh, means up to here only it is having positive inotropic effect dopamine dopamine has good uh, positive inotropic effect but it is not got good peripheral vasoconstriction but if you give high dose dopamine then your vasoconstriction effect improves and your uh, this uh, uh, inotropic effect decreases if you use low dose uh, dopamine then you will have neither good inotrope neither good vasoconstriction it is only in the um, renal doses adrenaline in high doses co- causes good vasoconstriction and um, have positive inotropic effect also to so like that dobutamine can have good positive inotrope but it will be vasodilatory so this is the only this agent causes low vas- vasodilatation so if you remember this chart you can have a better idea that which agent has a overall effect of which agent is what so to conclude you need to remember that one drug can have many receptors you need to remember the what is the most important most potent effect of that vasopressors dose response curve means at low doses they have a different effect at high doses they have a larger effect uh, means a different effect direct versus reflex action means like noradrenaline have a good vasopressor effect but cause a reflex uh, bradycardia but it is mediated by its beta 1 action 
volume resuscitation is a must before using uh, all these agents you need to make sure that your patient is filled with fluids tachyphylaxis means that if you are using these vasopressor anatropes for 2 days 3 days then they develop receptor become saturated they develop resistance so more higher doses of these vasopressors or anatropes are required no maximum dose per se for many agents so there is no effect maximum dose is written in the literature it depends on your hospital policies up to where you want to chase seeing the effect so do keep a watch on complication it is very very important mostly the complications are arrhythmias and if they leak through your um, blood vessels or intracath so it can cause exophysation and because they are good uh, vasoconstrictors they will cause arterial vasoconstriction and there will be tissue necrosis so give it via central line or external jugular and keep a watch on the complication arrhythmias frequently reevaluate that means a patient may have cardiogenic shock but now develop septic shock also a patient may have septic shock now develop septic myocarditis be develop cardiogenic shock also a patient may have septic shock or cardiogenic shock and develop an allergic reaction to certain medication can develop anaphylaxis so constantly reevaluate your patient which type of shock is uh, this patient is having so this is all for today's lecture so to know more about esbicm how to become member and other stuff you can go to esbicm and this is you know all know the icu channel you can go and contact us comment in the section you can drop a mail discuss on the forum if you feel anything we have left in this session i would like to clear that out thank you and again do read more about this topic in detail and you will get um you will now understand in a better way thank you